Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. We are in a little bit of a zoomed out view today because I wanted to get my whole bookshelf in the frame and I got most of it, I would say. And that is because I'm about to do the Do I Have That Book challenge. And this was started by Tabby over at Keeping Tabs. And I was tagged like for ever and ever ago and i just haven't gone around to it until now but it's such a fun tag i've seen a lot of people doing it and i wanted to see how i would stack up to the competition so i'm maybe gonna time myself i don't know i've watched a few of these but i honestly forgot all of the questions so uh we're just gonna go in pretty much blind i guess so i have the list of challenges turned up and I do have some books in my room and on my TV stand but I'm not going to do those only the books on my shelves which are the majority of the books that I own but let's see how I do and I could start my timer I don't know like how well I'm gonna do in terms of timing or if I'm gonna really try and like rush but you know it'll be good to see number one do you have a book with deckled edges okay there's pretty much a lot of options I can choose for this one I'm gonna go with Fury Born by Claire Legrand. Just read this one for the second time. I love it. All these tabs on these deckled edges make my life hard because it sucks tagging de deckled edges books, but I think publishers are moving away from them because they realize that people don't like them that much. So yes, this is my first book. Question two, do you have a book with three or more people on the cover? Three or more? Well, let's see. All of the Shadowhunters books only have like one or two people, right? Game of Thrones doesn't have any people. Throne of Glass is all Selena. A Court of Thrones and Roses is all Feyre. Oh wow, this one's hard. It's all, they all have like one person on them. Oh, oh, I got it. I got A Reaper at the Gates by Sampa Tahir. Oh my God, these tabs are a mess. This is before I started using like real tabs and there's like paper tabs. We're stuck out. Anyways, I read this book last year. Loved it. The first two books, I think it goes by the number of perspectives that we have. So in the first book, we only have Laya and Elias's perspectives. So we only have two people on the cover, which I never saw him on that cover. I only thought it was one. And then Torch Against the Night has all three, which is Laya, Elias, and Helene. And honestly, like I wasn't sure how I felt about these cover redesigns when they first dropped, but I actually really like them. I'm eh about people on the cover, but I like people on the cover in this one. Okay, yes, I found one. It was surprisingly hard to find one with three people on the cover. Like a lot of them only have one person on the cover. Question three, do you have a book based on another fictional story? Well, this one should be easy because there are retellings abound. For this one, I picked out Crass by Marissa Meyer because this one's my favorite in the Lunar Chronicles, which Cinder is a Cinderella retelling, Scarlet is a Little Red Riding Hood retelling, Crest is a Rapunzel retelling, and Winter is a Snow White retelling. And Cress, it's funny because Rapunzel is another name for a lettuce that is also known as Water Crest. So the fact that her name is Cress is really her name is Rapunzel. Clever play on words. You wouldn't realize that if you didn't know things about foliage. Anyways, so it's cool that it's like a series of fairy tale retellings that they all interconnect and they all like know each other and it's cool. And Cress is definitely my favorite of the series. And honestly, like I need to give this series a reread because I freaking loved it a lot when I read it for the first time. I'm not being timely at all with this. Four, do you have a book with a title 10 letters long? This is, oh, I just remembered on Books with Chloe's video that she found Six of Crows, so I'm not allowed to use Six of Crows. Oh, damn it, so close. I'm just standing here counting. They're all 11. Yes, okay. Never Night by J. Kristoff is 10 letters. Oh my God, that was actually so difficult because I was just like counting my fingers like, how many letters does this have? It's very hard to find a book with just 10 letters in the title. Anyway, Never Night by J. Kristoff. I adore this series. I can't wait for Dark Dawn, which is only eight letters in the title. But yes, I love it. Look at all these beautiful tabs that I have in this book. Oh. I'm happy I picked this one because I just need to give some Nevernight love and that has definitely slowed down my time a lot because that took a long time. <laughs> Question five, do you have a book with a title that starts and ends with the same letter? All right, maybe like A would be the easiest one to start with if, or like a the one, uh -huh. or S maybe. Ah, 
Sorcery of Thorns starts with an S here, ends with an S here. I knew that S would be a good one to go with because, yeah, I mean, S is plural and everything. It makes life easy. Also, like, this is my new favorite book. I love it a lot. Also, it's signed and it says, to Katie, always be polite to books. I'm being so polite to my books during this challenge. No books were harmed in the making of this challenge, even though it is to the death. Just kidding. It's, it's only timed. Do you have a mass market paperback? I hate mass market paperbacks, but I actually do have one. This is probably the only mass market paperback on my shelf because on principle, I hate buying them. I just think they're the worst to read from. Also, if you've ever seen any of Brandon Sanderson's books in the bookstore, like Way of Kings and Oath Breaker and stuff in mass market paperback, it's a brick. Like, how is that comfortable? To read. Anyways, this is a tangent, but I have To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, and I have this mass market paperback I got in high school after I read the book, and I think this cover is only on the mass market paperback, so that's why I got it, because I just love this cover so much that I put the fact that it's mass market paperback aside, and I actually did a read-along for this with Tom from TJ Reads the Stars like maybe a year ago, and that's how we started talking some more, so it's really nice, and I have some really great memories associated with it, and it's such like a powerful and meaningful book. Do you have a book written by an author using a pen name? So if this is like a totally made up name, oh, I know. City of Bones by Cassandra Clare. Cassandra Clare is not her real name. Her real name is Judith Lewis. In case you were wondering, Cassandra Clare is a pen name. Who would have thought? That was actually super easy because I knew this. Also, this edition is so pretty and we're getting one like this for Clockwork Angel and I cry on the inside. Do you have a book with a character's name in the title? I could use Harry Potter for this, but that's just like too obvious. Um, ooh. I'm gonna go with The Picture of Dorian Gray, and this is in other works by Oscar Wilde. So this is all of Oscar Wilde's works, but I'm just gonna go with Picture of Dorian Gray, obviously. This is like one of those Barnes and Noble classics and it's so pretty. And The Picture of Dorian Gray is one of my favorite classics. I like went on this classics kick in high school and just like read all these classics and some of my favorites. So that's why I have this big tome from Barnes and Noble and that just made my life easy. It actually isn't going too bad. is isn't going too bad. Do you have a book with two maps in it? And again, I saw a Chloe video that Six of Crows fits this prompt, so I can't use it. So that's gonna make my life way more difficult. Ooh, what about God's grave? Oh, I think it does. I do think that it does. Oh, I hope the dedication is for my enemies. I couldn't have done it without you. Myself is so snarky and hell yeah. Oh, it has three maps, so I don't know if this can count. If it has three, we have Atria, the Republic, then the City of God's Grave, then Crow's Nest. All beautiful maps, but that's that's three maps, not two. What about Nevernight itself? That one might only have two. Okay. Nevernight has two. Let's see if I can find one that's not Nevernight so I'm not doubling up on books. Hell yeah, okay. Priory has two maps. We have the Western continent and then we go over to the East and then we have some illustrations of dragons. Okay, that was harder than I thought, but you know what? I need to find an individual book for every challenge because I don't back down from a challenge. All right, what's next? Do you have a book that was turned into a TV show? Yes, I do. One of my favorite TV shows is Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. Oh my God, I love this series so much. I read all eight books, which are like gigantic with like super tiny text. It took me a long time, but I did it for my love of Outlander. Do you have a book written by someone who was originally famous for something else? Okay. So I'm gonna go with this. This is The Disappearing Spoon by Sam Keen, and he's like a whimsical science writer, and I actually love these books. If you love science, definitely check them out. They all have like different themes. This one's theme is like it's little anecdotes about the people that 
discovered the elements of the periodic table so it's either stories about like how the different elements work or about like people that discovered them and it's really cool like on the back it says why did gandhi hate iodine how did radium nearly ruin marie curie's reputation why is gallium the go-to element for laboratory pranksters blah 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 and it's like a really interesting and fun way to learn that is a tangent anyways sam keen who wrote this has actually been a writer for science and his work has appeared in different magazines as a science writer so that's something that he's famous for before he wrote this book that one was hard i really did not have many like, i don't own non-fiction books or anything like that because if i were to read them they would probably be on audio do you have a book with a clock on the cover my first instinct is to go to clockwork angel clockwork prince or clockwork princess but i don't know if they actually have clocks on the cover <sighs> yes okay there's big ben in the background okay i feel like there should be a clock if it's Clockwork Angel, like that's just obvious, right? Awesome. One of my favorite series, I love it. Do you have a poetry book? I do not have a poetry book, however, like I just know I don't have poetry. I am gonna twist this one a little bit. So I'm gonna use Lady Midnight, which if you haven't read Lady Midnight, you'll be like, what the heck? But what's cool about the uh, Dark Artifices is that they always have an Edgar Allan Poe poem inspires the titles of the chapters and I'm not going to say what poem it is if you haven't read it because I think it's really awesome to discover on your own and maybe if you're not familiar with Edgar Allan Poe's works you wouldn't pick up on that but it's a really cool aspect of the book so I do recommend if you read these to go and find the poems that match each one and I think in Lord of Shadows and Queen of Air and Darkness I think the respective poems are in the beginning but anyway so this is a book that incorporates poetry into the plot in a really unique way so I'm counting for the challenge. God I'm doing it terribly on time. You have a book with an award stamped on it. What's well, one awards? I do All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dewar, which is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I mean, it's a beautifully written book, phenomenal. That's why it won the Pulitzer Prize. And on the back it says National Book Award finalist and the 10 best books, New York Times Book Review 2014. So it's got quite the accolade. Do you have a book written by an author with the same initials as you? So that would be KS. So um, that seems kind of difficult. Let's see. First I need like Ks. Don't even think I have any of those. So I'm not even gonna count this one because I don't think it should count, but Cat Show is the closest that I could get because she's the only one that is an author that starts with a K that I have on this bookshelf. Okay, next one is, we're getting close to the end. Do you have a book of short stories? I do! It is, I didn't think I was going to, but it's The Cruel Crown by Victoria Aviard, which is two short stories in the Red Queen series. I could have gotten out Broken Throne, which is like the new short story collection that has like more short stories. So I can probably unhaul this one actually, because it has these short stories and more, but it's also at the bottom of a gigantic stack of heavy Red Queen books. Don't really feel like doing with that right now. Okay, okay. I'm actually doing better than I thought. I'm doing horribly on time, but better than I thought. Do you have a book that is between 500 and 510 pages long? This is very specific. Let's see. All my like 500 page-ish books. <gasps> oh, whoa. How is the first one that I picked actually right? That is amazing to me. The chance of that was very low. I was like, Skyward seems like it's gonna be about 500 pages and it was exactly 510. No way. That's crazy. I didn't think that was gonna happen. No freaking way. Last page of the book, 510. I'm impressed with myself. I don't know how it happened, but it did. We're nearing the end here. Do you have a graphic novel? Yes, I do. Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. One of the cutest graphic novels ever. I love it so much. Do you have a book written by two or more authors? I'm gonna pick Gemina out of the Illuminate Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff because it's so pretty. Look at it. It's my favorite book in the series. I love it. I love it. I love it. And with that said, I have now at the end of the challenge. And I did horribly on time. I did horribly. Let's see my timer. Uh, 24 minutes. I kept getting interrupted by my boyfriend, so I don't know if this counts. Oh god, I chose so many books. I don't think I'm gonna be able to physically hold this book stack, but I'm gonna give it a try. This is gonna go horribly wrong. I'm not even gonna try this for the thumbnail. 
Oh my god. No way. This is not gonna work. I'm struggling. Lift! No! <laughs> no! Oh my god. Okay, well, these are just the hardcovers. These are all the books that I got from the challenge, and my back is literally breaking. So that's fun. But, um, yeah, that was fun. I think I got almost all of them but one. So however much that adds up to be, but I'm gonna put these down before I break my back. Oh, oh, and then the nice paperbacks. So easy to hold. So wonderful. Time to put everything back down. That was a workout. And so now I'm gonna tag some friends to do this challenge. I'm gonna tag Madison Mary of Princess Paperback, Soleil from the Little Reader's Corner, Jess from Tunch of Tomes, Jade from the Jade Reader, Trey from Faye Trey, Cindy, well, I can't really tag Cindy because she doesn't have books. <laughs> Not tagging Cindy. <laughs> uh, Chanel from Chanel Time, Angela from Blum Books, uh, Lucy from Crescent Pages, and Yasmin from Yasmin the Reader. Okay guys, you get to do this madness and craziness. I know it's a challenge you to try and take a thumbnail of all your books at the end, but like, please don't break your back like I did. All right, um, so let me know what you thought of all this craziness in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.